I want to enter something into the, the discussion from a listener now. I, I don't have their name. I have their email address, so I'm just going to call them Mo based on their email address. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mo asks uh, th- this interesting question. I, I want to tail on with something here because I think that this question is going to go a lot deeper than the listener even thought. Um, so here we go. Uh, might the idea of a future global war fought over water have more to do with the coming age of Aquarius uh, rather than uh, the shortage of fresh water? That is their question. But I want to add something here. Um, to me, this has nothing to do with Aquarius. It's, in fact, a much more scary thing because it is literally, if you think about it, water in and of itself is life. So... There, there is nothing on this planet that survives without it. So when people are battling over resources, yeah, oil, I realize, is an important thing, and plenty of blood has been spilled, and listen, blood has been spilled, will be spilled, and is being spilled uh, continuously for various resources, diamonds, you know, natural gas, uh, steel, it doesn't matter. Different parts of our history show us this, but... The fact that it's now being turned uh, to water is interesting because at the end of the day, there is no one, no matter what their riches are, no matter what their uh, 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 power is, their ability to move a vehicle or anything else, you know, it's, it's all irrelevant if you have a locked control over life itself. And to control water is to control life. I, I think it's got a lot more to do with that than Aquarius easily. And uh, I think that that's a much more scary thing. I think it's also, uh, uh, you know, dare I say it, it's actually a ritualistic, magical kind of thing that's going on when people are beginning to battle over these these elements, these very basic elements of life itself, more than oil, more than anything else that's ever been battled over. So, Jordan, again, the question is, uh, you know, do you think that this has to do with the coming age of Aquarius? Uh, and I add the question, do you think that there is an esoteric aspect to this that is actually ritualistic, actually magical, and not in the magical, wonderful world of whatever sort of way, but uh, but really in a deep, dark sort of uh, we're going to get a stranglehold over life itself on the planet kind of agenda, which goes right to serving the adversary uh, who does indeed rule this particular world. So those two questions, I throw at you, and I think that uh, this this is going to be a, a dark and deep subject immediately, but keep in mind the first part of it is, uh, does it have to do with the coming age of Aquarius, the fact that this is happening? And uh, and secondly, you know, do, do you want to speak to the more esoteric aspects of the battle over water on the planet uh, in a religious context? Well, uh, I don't think Aquarius is going to affect us that are listening today because it's not going to be around for another couple, 300 years. We're not in the age of Aquarius yet and won't be around for at least a couple, three, maybe 400 years yet before Aquarius will be here officially. And obviously, there's going to be a symbolic implication to the world of the age of Aquarius. It, Sometimes I've often thought it meant a time when the world will be washed up. <laughs> and that's what we're looking at. We're, we're getting to the point where we're running out of everything, uh, running out of answers, and we're running out of materials. We're running out of everything. We're running out of our, our out of our minds. And so it looks like maybe the world's going to be washed clean mm-hmm. of all the ludicrous, ludicrous stuff that we're into. Maybe that's what it means. But I am, I know that Aquarius is no longer going to be a problem we're going to have to deal with, we who are living today, because it's not coming for a few, quite a few years. <clears throat> because you've got to know where did the other uh, astrological signs begin and where was the one just before us the one we're in right now is Pisces well in order to know when Aquarius arrives officially you have to know when where did Pisces the one we're in now where did that age officially begin <clears throat> and so each each age is 2150 years long 
well, if each age is 2,100 years long, mm -hmm. when did Aquarius, when did Pisces begin? The age of Pisces with the two fish, which is the age of religion. Well, we, we've been involved with religion and churches and faith and all of that for the past 1,600 years since the founding of the Catholic Church 1,600 years ago and the Vatican <clears throat> and the age of Aquarius, it seems to point to the fact that age of Aquarius officially began about the 4th century A.D. That's what the best I can come up with, the best uh, evaluations I have seen mm. that makes sense to me is that <clears throat> uh, uh, Pisces began around, around the 4th century A.D., and, and our time in A.D. And so you count 2,150 years from the 4th century A.D., and that puts, it, that puts us with the beginning of the age of Aquarius in somewhere around 2,400-something. Mm. Well, we're in 21, so we've got about 300 and some odd years to go yet. But this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. This is not the age. This mm -hmm. is the dawning of the age. That's what the song says. And why do we call it the dawning? Because the sun has not risen yet in the age of Aquarius. It hasn't come up. The stars on the eastern, you know, on the eastern horizon are not in Aquarius. They're mm -hmm. still in Pisces. Right, and we and talked so, at length about the dawning of and, and the idea that there are effects before you can actually see the sun when the dawning is occurring. So this isn't literally when the sun is up uh, that's right. in, when you're talking about dawning. And the thing is that uh, when when you put it together here uh, and, you, and you say, okay, 4th century, that means that when the calendar read about 300 is yep. when this happens. So if the calendar's reading 2,000 now, that means the calendar's got to read 2,400 in order to even get there. Uh, but in all fairness, the, the listener did ask the coming age. Is, does it have to do with the coming age of Aquarius? Which, you know, in, in a uh, relative sort of way, is, is soon to happen, but hasn't yet happened, obviously, like you said. So do, do you think that that has anything to do with this battle that's going on over the resource of water? At this time, well, I think maybe that has something to do with it. But I'm also interested in the fact that all financial institutions of the world of mankind operate under something called maritime admiralty law. Maritime admiralty law is referred to in law as the law of the sea, the law of water. And that's why we say money goes through your hands like water. No, money is water. And so Aquarius is a sign of the man with the water pitcher pouring water out into the earth. So it seems th there was an incredibly important book put out on this subject <clears throat> by a professor in Texas. The name of the book was called Fire and Ice. Get it if you can find it. Fire and Ice, and I think his name was Professor Flowers. Professor Flowers okay. wrote a book called Fire and Ice, and in it he talks about the coming age of Aquarius and ties it connecting it directly to the brotherhood of Saturn or the powers behind the, uh, the world revolutionary movement of Adolf Hitler and the Soviet communism especially with Adolf Hitler and the Germanic peoples of the world, and shows how this whole idea of the coming of the age of Aquarius is not going to be very pretty. Mm. It's not going to be happy. This was the kind of stuff Adolf Hitler was preparing the world for. Well, if that's the case, and you have to know it's going to be an incredible world we're going to live in, because Adolf Hitler realized that there was coming an age of Aquarius, and he was preparing the world for that. And so what happened to the Earth during the Second World War? Well, that's what's going to happen to the Earth in the coming of the age of Aquarius. It's going to be very, very different than you think it is. It's not going to be some happy la-la land. Uh, imagined by spiritual people who think the age of Aquarius is going to be so wonderful. No, go back and read the book 
Fire and Ice by uh, by Professor Flowers. In it, he talks about how there's going to be a lot of strange connections to that age of Aquarius with other astrological signs implicated in it, what it really means it's going to be like, what the world's going to be like when it hits the age of Aquarius. And it's a very powerful book, Fire and Ice. And I think that the world is going to be a horrible place to live in. It's going to be a tragic, horrible place to live in when we hit the age of Aquarius officially. And I think the reason why is because look what we humans have come from in the past 200 years, a little over 200 years from the founding of our great republic to the horrible world of tyranny, communism, Marxist, Leninist, communism, fascism, bloodletting, murderers, and all kinds of horrible things going on in the world today. Look where we have gone down. Look where we have fallen down to. Well, just sit tight because the world's not getting any better. It's getting worse and worse by the day. And so where are we going to be in the next 300 years when the age of Aquarius begins? begins and i have no idea how bad it's going to be but from the past 250 years we have really hit the bottom today and our country is being destroyed from inside mm-hmm. and like the bible has like the bible has said no house can uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand well if there's ever been a house divided against itself it's america One half of our country hates our country. One half of our country hates the president. They hate the government. They want to destroy this country. They want to destroy uh, what we have built, what people have died to build in this country, give us freedom and liberty and justice and a wonderful uh, way of life in relation to the rest of the world. But one half of the country are fascist, murdering, morons who want to destroy this country and destroy its government and destroy the people and give away our country to foreign people. And so I know that, you know, given the fact that a house divided against itself cannot stand, I don't know how much longer America is going to be alive, how much longer we're going to actually live in the country that we live in and experiencing the wonderful life that we live here today in America because a house divided against itself cannot stand and we are falling very quickly. And the reason why is we have allowed the tyranny of fascists and murderers to teach our children. They have been university professors who have been teaching our children revolution, violence, pornography, uh, revolution, uh, all kinds of you know, subversive teachings in universities and not allowing the university students to express themselves. Yeah. We have something called political correctness where you cannot open your mouth and say what you think because you'll be mocked and laughed at or kicked out of university. And if the professors try and explain to you what's really going on, they will lose their job And so I see the whole of Western civilization and humanity in general certainly going toward a day of incredible collapse. Mm. That's where we're going. That's where we're heading for. A world collapse is coming, and we cannot continue to do the things that we've done and view the world the way we view it and promoting the bloodshed and the violence and the crap that we are in education and universities and entertainment, movies, all the pornography, violence, sex and drug rituals and religion. We're not going to continue. Something is going to happen to the world of mankind. And I know and I can feel it coming. I know that we're coming to a place where we're going to collapse. And when we do, it's going to be a horrible situation. And God knows how it's actually going to look and what the world is going to look like in the age of Aquarius. But from what, but from what Professor Flowers wrote in his book, Fire and Ice, it's not going to be very pretty. If you start mm-hmm. looking at all the accompanying 
information in astrology is that the age is coming is going to be a very, very seriously, uh, incredibly bad thing coming for us. We are heading down a wrong road. And it's, it's just too bad because I know that most people have no idea in the world what I'm talking about. But our future is very, very dark. 